Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to look at a specific design pattern, the one for iteration. So the iterator pattern is a design pattern that allows you to go from the start to the end of a container that contains a bunch of elements. It could be an array and we could be just visiting each element of the array, it could be visiting each element of a linked list, it could be a set. It could be a complex structure of any kind, but as long as it has a number of elements in it and our program wants to go from the start to the finish. For some structures, there's an easy way to know where it starts and finishes. For an array, it's the first element, the last element, whereas for sets, there's no particular ordering of them. Even for objects, a collection of objects, there's no order um, that we can easily access. So the iterator pattern creates a, an approach to allow us to visit each element one after the other. In a procedural programming language, how we probably do this is we'd have two methods, next and done, and the next method would say, give us the next element in the list or container, and the done method would say, that's it, we've reached the end of all of the elements. And our code would look something like this, while not done, do get the next item and do stuff. So that's all fine and well for procedural programming languages that it works. Whereas for OO languages, there's a little more detail in it. Typically in OO languages like Python, you have a next method in Python, it's underscore, underscore, next, underscore, underscore. Your done is called stop iteration, and that's a method that says we've reached the end of the list. We also need a method to convert our container or whatever it is into an iterable container. So we need to convert it into something that we can actually visit each element on. So that makes it a little bit more interesting because if it's something like a set or an, a collection of objects, there might not necessarily be an order to it. So we need a method that puts an order to it. And that method is called iter. So to implement that, the iterator pattern has two separate classes. One is the iterable class, which converts the container into an iterable object. And then second is the iteration class itself, which allows you to visit each element on the list. So we'll look at the pattern. And again, this is a template for code, not the code itself. So our iterable class to convert each element into an iterable thing has two methods, an init and an iter method. So the init method simply says, each value that's passed in, save it in this current object. So self.value gets whatever value is passed in. And then the iter class in the, in the iter method in the iterable class says, give me back a value that I can give me back a, 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 an individual value that's iterable now. And we, we do it by calling the iterator class. So let's look at the pattern for iteration, iterator. Iterator has three methods. It has the init one again. It has an iter class method and then a, a next method. So starting with the init method, whatever value is passed into it, it's stored in that ob the current object. And then typically what we do is create, create a counter of some kind so that we can count the number of objects or elements within a container we visited. And sometimes we use that to print out things like that. The iter class in iterator is simply returns whatever object we're in. And then the next, how do we get the next element? Well, next needs to check if we reach the end. So if based on some condition, and if the condition is true, then we haven't reached the end. And if the condition is false, then we have. So what do we do? We can see the else part of next just says raise stop iteration. That is to say, stop this code. So then if some condition is true and that there is a next value, then we, we, we put the current, the current element of the container into a variable called value. We add one onto the count and then we return that value back. So next essentially returns the next value in the list. 
that's what next does the the code in green will vary from from instance uh, from different programs but in general the the white code is the shape of the code so if we look at a simple example that just counts numbers starting at zero uh, we'll have three parts the iterable part the iteration part and there's the code part to execute it so the iterable code is almost exactly as we saw in the pattern it has an init that takes in a value and that so that's put into the current object and an iter that simply returns the iteration version of the current value the iterator pattern as before has three parts to it it has the init that sets a counter an index to zero and puts whatever value we pass in into value it has an iter that just returns the current object and then the next in our case what we want our code to do is keep counting until we reach the variable called value so if the value is 10 we we'll count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So as long as the current counter or index is less than the value passed in, then we say um, the, the current number in self is, is, is put into a variable called index. We add one onto self.index, and then we return the value of index. Otherwise, we've reached the end. If index is equal to value or index is greater than value, then we raise an exception by, by raising stop iteration. And then how we run this code is we create an iterable version by passing in the value 5 into my count iterable. That'll start the list. We can create a list from that using list count, using the list variable on first count. And then to iterate through that, we we call the method iter on first count. Once we do that, then we just simply have a loop that keep looping around and we say while true, do print out the next element of first count iter, and then otherwise we stop and, and break out of the loop. So what will that do? That will print out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now hang on a minute. Surely for a counter in range 0 to 5, print counter would also print out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in a lot less difficult way. Yes, that is true completely but for more complex objects when we're traversing a collection of objects or sets or things like that this pattern is easier for other developers to recognize as being an iterator pattern so for something simple i would do it exactly like the code in green here whereas for a more complicated structure we need the, our iterator and iteration patterns Something that goes hand in hand with um, the iterator class is what are called comprehensions. So comprehensions are very short syntaxes, simple syntaxes that allow you to convert objects from one format to another. And common examples would be list comprehensions, set comprehensions, and dictionary comprehensions. So let's look at a list comprehension. It, it really, it's a simple way of converting lists from one format to another. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have a list of strings, and there's a string 234, a string 75, a string 331, a string 73, and a string 5. If we want to convert them into a list of integers, 234, 75, 331, 73, and 5, how we do it normally is we'd create the string, create an output array, and we'd loop for each element in the string, do append onto the output string, the integer version of the, the values coming in. That's fine. Um, that's a simple enough way of doing it. We create the variable num is each is created in the for loop. So that's okay. But with uh, comprehension, and, and that's exactly what we get. We get what we're looking for. Uh, it looks good. But with the comprehension, all we have to do is say, Output 2, in this case, is the initialization of num for num in string array. So it's very simple. We just say the, the right bit first, call each element in the list num, one after the other after the other, and then the left bit is convert all the variables called num into integers. And that gives us exactly the same answer. 
so exactly the same we've converted but it's, there's no there's no need for the loopy syntax it's the same code really it almost implements it exactly the same way except you don't have to do the append call which means in terms of efficiency of code it's slightly more efficient but it's 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 more um short syntactically as well it's there's less lines of code some developers use these to show off a bit but i i think they're handy in certain circumstances it's as i said it's much faster in terms of implementation because you don't have to call the append we can also use the an if statement so what we can say is uh, only convert certain elements so this says pick any numbers that are less than pick any strings i beg your pardon that are less than three in length and convert them into integers so as we can see the input is the the values but the only strings that are converted into integers as output are the ones that are less than three digits so that's really powerful then we can select which we can have a list and select changes to be made on the list on the basis of a lot of features simply by doing stating the change having a for loop and then an if at the condition under which things are changed or not and and list comprehensions are very closely related to the iterator pattern because we can call the next method to get the next line in a file or, or element of a string if we had the following bit of text python is a widely used high level general purpose interpreted dynamic programming language it designs blah 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 so if we had that as a as a text file then we could open we could create a, a list comprehension approach by saying open that text file as a file and then create a variable lines with c that says for each line in the file if it starts with the letter c add it to create 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 it add it to uh, a list called lines with c in it strip just removes any special characters like at the start at the end of the code so strip removes the slash in at the end of each line for each line in the file that's simply each line in the file one at a time if the line starts with c then then add it to the the new variable called lines with c what that will do is generate a, create a list that has two lines in it the line that starts with c code readability and syntax allows programs to express and the line that starts with c concepts with fewer lines in of code that would be possible in programming languages so because both of those two lines in the file start with the letter c boom we get both of those lines in our new list so it's a handy way of searching for text within a file now let's move on to set comprehensions so a set comprehension is like a list comprehension except it's it's dealing with a set which in python is a list with no duplicate entries one way we could create a set is simply by using the set constructor to convert um, a list into a set but we can also just use set comprehension so let's say we have the following code that we have a a collection of information about writers each there's a, 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 a variable called book that takes in an author's name a title of the book and what genre it's in so for example the first one is terry pratchett's night watch and it's fantasy so we have that structure if we wanted to create a set from that we could for example say all the fantasy authors are a set so it's curly brackets the author's name and for each book in the list if the book's genre is fantasy then give me a list of all the authors b dot author but not a list i beg your pardon a set so it will give you just pratchett Le Guin, and turner it won't give you a duplicate entry of pratchett or Le Guin or turner it just gives each one once so that's a set uh, comprehension a dictionary comprehension is similar except a dictionary has a, a label at the start of each term so if we have our same list of authors again and we go give me the titles of books the fantasy the title plus all the details of that book for each book if the genre is fantasy then we get that list of that dictionary of authors that we can just search which is great thanks very much